very first red flag now that i've done a lot of research and understanding it was we moved way too fast and and way too fast didn't happen i had been knowing him because i had been interacting through my work with him for probably about four months but when we went on our first date the first date never ended i moved in like the same day and that may seem really strange to people, but I had been knowing him. I had been knowing him from my work, and we had interacted. On, I thought he was a really nice guy, and I moved in. But that should have never happened. When a person moves really fast in relationships, that is one of the key signs of an abuser. I did not know that. I had no idea until I started doing more and more reading about it, Chris. Abuse wasn't something new to me because I grew up where my mom was physically abused by my dad. But I think for me, I never had an abusive boyfriend. I had never had an abusive husband. And I had been married before this person, twice before. So, and the first time was 17 years. The second marriage was eight months. And then this was my third time. And I'm saying that to you publicly because that was one of the things that I was tortured and tormented with. You are a three-time failure. You've been married three times. You don't know how to be in relationship. You don't know. And so I was being tortured with that. And so I feel for me, I tried and I stayed for so long because I didn't want to be a three-time failure. But then I had to start thinking about it. My first marriage lasted 17 years. I am not a failure. I know how to be married. But what I think after staying married for 17 years, you start to realize that if things aren't going to be right, you get out early on. My second marriage ended abruptly after eight months because there was a horrific tragedy that happened in that marriage. And I don't, I don't, I'm not at liberty to say, I don't really want to talk about that. And I wasn't prepared to handle that. That's just being completely honest. I never, ever thought I would be married a third time. But it happened, love came, and I wasn't afraid to love again. So, and I'm not afraid to say that that's a part of my testimony. A part of my self-esteem being beaten down has been that. You've been married three times. So people, that they start to really hone in on what they perceive to be a major flaw or one of your weaknesses, and they want to use that to tear you down. And I think I allowed that to happen because I was I was being made to feel like I was a three time failure, and and that and that's not the case. No, no, not at all. Do you feel like um, with him doing that? That well, it was a sense of control. Him saying that you know this is what's wrong with you, and I'm the only one that's going to accept what's wrong with you. So you need to get it together, and you know we're going to be together, and and those things. Do you feel that he did that? Oh my goodness, you put that so perfectly. I mean, Chris, that is exactly what happened to me. That is exactly what it was. Just another form of control. And so then the manipulation started, where it was, I started feeling like this person latched on to me for the notoriety and the fame of my name and it was like you 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 don't love me you're in love with the deluge of who I am and what my name meant in certain circles and so that started to become evident to me that it wasn't about me because the way I feel today having survived this you never liked me anyway there was nothing about me that you really liked. You were in love with my gifts and my talents and whatever it could do for you and your life. But at the end of the day, love doesn't hurt. Love doesn't hurt, you know. And I just keep thinking about the scripture that says love is patient, love is kind, love is all of those things. That's not what I felt. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some days that I would feel loved but they were so far few and in between. I was harassed for everything, even including my snoring at night, that I was made to feel like because I snore that that is such a major flaw. There were so many negatives, the, the negatives that were said, and then I was told you're too sensitive. So there, was, there were a lot of messages. So he would, he would verbally abuse you, and then when it would affect you, he would say you're too sensitive. So you're just supposed to just roll with the punches and just accept all those negative things that he was saying about you and not have anything to say about it, not shed a tear, not – that's not even realistic. No. And if I did shed tears, my tears didn't matter either. 
I remember a time that I was so upset about something that was said and I ran into our living room and I cried. I was crying my eyes out. I was just bawling because I was really doing everything that I could to make this relationship work. And he came out and said, would you please shut up and slam the bedroom door so he would not have to hear me cry. And I remember feeling so disregarded and so just trashed that I busted the door open to the bedroom and I said, how dare you? How dare you do me like that? And he just would tell me to be quiet. He wanted to go to sleep. But as a woman, you feel so violated if I'm shedding tears and my tears mean nothing to you. There, there was a callousness and a cruelty that was just unreal. And there were days that I would sit and I would think to myself, I don't deserve to be treated this way. Somebody to be so cold and so callous that they don't even care about my tears. That to me is very, very sad. So the same person that, that brought you back that would, when you would leave or he would tell you to leave, he'd say, you know, baby, come back. I love you, this, that, and the other. But it, I mean, I don't mean to be insensitive, but the man sounds bipolar. You know, like he's got a split personality or something. Um, were you aware, I guess you weren't aware that maybe he had some abuse in his past? I was not aware at the time.